Hey everyone, this is Steven Spender with Idea Me, and today we are interviewing performing artist Tara Travis. Hello, Tara. Hello. Thanks so much for doing this. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Uh, so, first question Who are you? In short, I am an actor, writer, puppeteer, creative human. Mm -hmm. That's what it says on my business cards, anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in long, oh, well, I'm sure we'll get into it, but uh, yeah, I guess my my essence, my personal mandate is to spread joy through comedy and good old fashioned human decency. So uh, I'm a I'm a human being who navigates the world as well as she can, uh, creating interesting work, either through puppetry or physical theater or comedy or right. radio drama. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and all that kind of stuff. Cool. So let's just go back to the beginning really quickly. Um, okay. So where were you born? I was born in Maple Ridge, British Columbia. Uh, when did you first start getting interested in artistic endeavors? From a very young age. Um, I think before I had even seen a play, I was trying to do them, but I just didn't right. understand what it was. Right. I, I had this idea that I needed to be a performer I was always kind of putting on shows and making my neighbors come and making my sisters act things out in the backyard. And uh, and the only thing that I had so seen was... So directing and producing, kind of. Directing and producing the whole thing. <laughs> like, I was running the show. Yeah. Uh, so my sister is three years older than me. I'm like, no, this is how you do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I guess it was kind of an innate quality from an early time. And yeah, the, the only thing that I had really seen was ballet for some reason I guess we've been taken to the ballet and I thought oh, okay well I guess that's the thing I'll I'll be a ballerina <laughs> yeah. you know I, I got put in this really serious um, ballet school and I, I did not belong there this really uptight Russian instructor who was like she was training athletic yeah ballerina I was just this chubby awkward kid that was like I want to be seen <laughs> you know Half the time I'd show up in my bathing suit, you know, like I was just, <laughs> and she's just like, no, no, I can't, I don't, I, no, no, not this, no. Yeah. Um, and uh, bless my mother, she found the, um, the Maple Ridge Community Players and, and got me in there, and so I started doing community theater, I think, by the age of eight. If you just, were you just, did you just continue doing it, or was it kind of like that happened, there, there was a lull, or was it always consistently like you were kind of No, I stuff? just knew. I just knew. It was it was very much a driving force in my life. I took um, I took classes as soon as we found some. There was an amazing um, Vancouver-based mm -hmm. artist, uh, Tanya Dixon-Warren, who's with, um, uh, oh no, I can't remember the name of the theater company right now. It'll come to me later. Yeah. Um, but they're, they're absolutely incredible. And uh, interestingly, her dad was my family doctor. He's the one who received me from my mother's womb. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, we found her at the Maple Ridge Dance Circle. Um, but she was teaching acting classes for kids. Mm -hmm. And so I started studying with her. And she was really, she was a huge inspiration for me. Um, because she treated us like adults who were interested in the art of theater. Um, mm -hmm. She didn't condescend to us. She, um, she treated, she, you know, she taught us, you know, the things that she had learned at a university level. Um, and so I think that really prepared me for, for a life in the theater, you know, starting at the age of 10. Um, and yeah, did a number of different adaptations with her. I got to play Prospero and, you know, um, we did this four-hander adaptation of Romeo and Juliet where we all got to shapeshift and play multiple characters, which, mm -hmm. as it turns out, um, was what I was meant to do. It sort of <laughs> become my specialty. <laughs> Horse Raven Theater is the name of Tanya Dixon's <laughs> company. Oh, good. She also goes by Tanya Farah sometimes. Anywho. Okay. It's important. Horse Raven <laughs> Theater. Okay. I'm going to read out yeah. just a couple, a little bit of your bio. I'm missing, I'm going to miss big pieces, but... So, as you said, you're actor, writer, puppeteer, known for solo shows and shape-shifting vocal acrobatics. And stuff. And stuff. <laughs> artistic, produce, artistic producer of Monster Theater. Um, can you explain what Monster Theater is? Quickly? Yes. And there's also a story there. Okay. Um, but, yeah, Monster Theater was founded in 2000 
It's a Canadian theater company. The artistic director is Ryan Gladstone, who's an incredible playwright, director, actor. Um, and it's uh, the mandate essentially is is taking um, inspiration from history and uh, and just messing with it, just irreverent comedy. But usually it's to do with history or storytelling. Mm-hmm. Um, it's largely work for adult audiences, but there's also an arm of the theater. A company that is for young audiences so we create school shows as well mm-hmm. um, uh, which are usually adaptations cheeky adaptations of classics of literature uh, but very recently I reduced my role within that company I'm now actually the artistic or an, an artistic associate okay. um, and still working with them it's very uh, it's all amicable and such right. um, just that company, the nature of that company is that we need to be on the road all the time. It's all touring theater, and I'm, mm. you know, I've just been getting a little road weary and um, uh, needing some time to refill the creative well. So I thought, yeah. oh, I'll, I'll step away and, and leave room to be called to other things, which I really needed. Making that decision has felt so right. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. I want to ask you more about that, about touring, yeah. being on the road. Um, yeah. Uh, was I. What's what's the exact title? The Wives of Henry VIII? Is that the title? Oh, it's a no, Till it's Death, not, The Six Wives of Henry VIII. Okay, so yeah. Till Death, Six Wives of Henry VIII. That was with Monster Theater, right? Yes. Okay, yes. so... And, you and play- that show still tours sometimes. Right, yeah. right, right. Okay, I'll ask you more about that later. Okay, so you're okay. also the artistic... <laughs> you're also the artistic oh. director of Sticky Fingers Productions. Are you yeah. still... Yeah. This is still on? Okay. <laughs> this is still on. I know I haven't updated the website since 2014, but uh, that company is still a thing. And I'm writing a new show with that company, which I can tell you about later as well. Okay. Cool. Um, you have co-created and performed in over 30 productions. That's a lot of productions. Several. Yes, yeah, several. Um, Many. Playing upwards of 12 vocally and physically different characters. And now I'm skipping right to the end of your of your bio, where it says, most yes. recently, you've been touring North America with Best Picture. Yes. 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 Took a big jump, time jump there, um, where three actors attempt to perform all 87 Best Picture Academy Award winners in one hour. Is that right? Hey. Which is now which is now eighty nine. We have to add a new one every time we do it. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> right, right. Gotcha, gotcha. So that, that bio is a little a little bit out of date, but um Okay. Yeah. You, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you play fifty six characters. Yes. Wow. So what's it's that just like? Not... <laughs> it's super fun. It's super fun. It's a uh, it's it's another company outside of my other associations. Uh with, it's called Ribbit Republic Theater. That's largely produced that show, but um, uh, it's a, with a, an amazing, bizarre, uh, dear friend of mine named Kurt Fitzpatrick. He just he has one of those minds where it just goes places that you would never conceive of. Like he's just mm. one of the most highly creative and inventive and hilarious people I know. Um, yeah, his, his solo shows are just some of the weirdest things I've ever seen. And I love them. Yeah. Um, so when he asked me to do this show, uh, along with our friend, John Patterson, with whom I've collaborated many times as well, uh, I just, I knew it would be the most fun thing ever. Um, mm-hmm. and what an insane idea to try to cover all of the Academy Award Best Picture winners in one hour. Um, it's just fast and furious ridiculousness. And it's not its not like we went, okay, one, wings, blah, blah, blah. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not like that at all. This comes from the mind of Kurt Fitzpatrick, the genius. Um, so he interwove everything. It's, it's, so it's, I guess it's kind of sketch-like, mm. um, but he would sometimes layer upward of four movie references in one scene so it would be rocky meets annie hall meets hamlet meets shakespeare in love all in one little segment and so if you're not paying attention you miss a whole bunch of them but uh yeah it mixed with some quirky quirky humor and depending on who the audience is sometimes they're just like (laughs) they're they're about to just go (laughs) but uh 
it's one of the greatest challenges I've ever had as a performer. And I like, I love just pushing that envelope. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, next? What's the next crazy challenge? So it's fun. Oh, so much fun. Yeah. We haven't done that one in a little while, but yeah, we were touring it for yeah. quite a quite a few years um, all over North America. And so, where did this ability come from to play all these characters? I don't really know exactly. Um, I think, you know, it started with imaginative play, like it does for a, a lot of children. But I think, you know, it was, I used to do puppet shows for my little sister at the foot of her bed when she couldn't sleep and make up all the different little characters, make up all the voices and stuff. And, um, and in my career, I think when I was first starting out, I, uh, I was, I was having some pretty hefty low self-confidence, um, I think, you know, in my, in my little community of Maple Ridge, I was, it was easy to kind of be the star and win all the acting scholarships and have the lead in every play and all of those things. Yeah. And then the idea of actually having to get out there and do it, um, I actually got really anxious and depressed for quite a while and kind of shut down. Mm. I was kind of overwhelmed by everything I decided I was going to do and all of a sudden, the minute the world was saying, show me, I went, oh, never mind, I'm probably, I probably can't do anything. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah. um, and then there's kind of a long gap there. But to actually answer your question, blah, 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 a couple of years. Yeah. I found my way through a puppetry audition yeah. um, and ended up working with this company where I was playing a number of characters through puppets. Mm. And that brought me back to life as an actor because... It didn't matter what this body could do or looked like or any of the things that were concerning me or shutting me down. Mm. I could play a 10-year-old boy. I could play a Scottish goat. I could play a whatever. And each mask informed a different voice. And yeah. so, yeah, I think just my tools grew from there. So that was your first exposure to puppetry? Uh, pretty Can much, yeah. Out? Yeah. I just... A significant <laughs> I, one, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, because I had been producing little theater shows and just trying to make that happen, but I was working as an arts administrator and I almost had a nervous breakdown. I was in the middle of losing it in this office. Yeah. And I'm usually pretty good at containing myself <laughs> publicly, but I was just, I remember one day I was just, I was overwhelmed and I was just kind of pacing in this office. And I was just like, I. I know I'm funny. I know I can do all these voices. I know I can do something. Like, why am I here? Why am I here? You know, and I was just <clears throat> having this insane person rant. <clears throat> and uh, I'm dating myself, but this, uh, yeah. this a fax came through <laughs> on the Alliance for Arts fax net, which is sort of like a, a network for sharing information. And it said, Puppeteer Wanted. And it was almost like this ray of light came down from the heavens. Just <laughs> 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 I grabbed it and I went... See you guys a little later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just went and faked my way through an audition. And I think because I had been pursuing physical theater and I'd done a lot of mask training, it it translated quite quickly, especially to, to hand puppetry. You know, yeah. anything that you that you learn here, um, you can just take it here, like without you know, it, it translates to the hand pretty easily once you've got a good sense of how mask works. Yeah. So yeah, and then I started to learn the ropes of touring and multiple character work and stuff, and um, and that's ultimately how I ended up getting connected with Monster Theater. Right. Because he came to see one of my puppet shows, and he was like, this guy looks funny. I'm looking for a collaborator in Vancouver. Let's chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> My answers are long and meandering. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Is it freeing doing puppetry? I mean, like to have a, a puppet, is that kind of like, is there kind of a freedom in that? Like sort of. Absolutely there is. Absolutely there is. Mm. I can't really explain the phenomenon, but there, puppets can get away with anything. Mm. And I don't know what it is. Yeah. But I. Why I have that? a lot of, I don't know. I, I, I guess it's just the removal from the puppeteer where it's a, it's a suspension of disbelief thing right. where, where we honor and respect the life in that 
creature in the moment and we, we endow it with that. And so all responsibility goes to this character who, because they're a furry, what have you, or <laughs> whatever they are, yeah. um, it's, it, it belongs to them and, and the responsibility is off the puppeteer a little bit. Uh, because I, you know, I've tried stand up comedy and I've tried a bunch of different things cause I, I have a lot of wacky and potentially controversial ideas, but I'm very reluctant to share them through my own face. But, mm. um, but put fluffy on my hand, uh, fluffy <laughs> chemistry, my <laughs> misunderstood performance artist character. Um, and she'll say it all for me. And it's not me. I don't mm. say it. It's her. Yeah, and people, yeah. and I get to keep a clean <laughs> rap sheet. <laughs> and where's the, when's the next puppet show or performance? Do you know? I am working on a remount of a monster theater show called Who Killed Gertrude Crump? Right. Uh, which its first incarnation was an absolute nightmare, I'll be honest. But it's a solo murder mystery. Um, I play Agatha Christie, who's come back from the dead, to tell this story that she never published. And she's in the afterlife, so yeah. <laughs> why not pop it? Um, <laughs> and so <laughs> it's kind of this dotty ghost of Agatha Christie um, with these tabletop puppets that are I don't, they're, they're kind of like bobblehead puppets in a way. Like I have little thumb holds. So they're all on stage and they have magnetic feet. And I'm doing yeah. this, like I'm manipulating upward of 12 characters at once. Um, it's insane. But yeah, we got a grant to rebuild it. So um, it's mm. going to be much better and kind of magical. February 12th to 18th at Performance Works um, on Granville Island in Vancouver. Yes. In association with the Vancouver International Puppet Festival, which I recently co-founded. Nice. <laughs> nice. And how is the... Can you see a direct link between the puppetry and all this character work that you're doing? Is, is that something that you can sort of cognitively sort of see a connection or has it just kind of happened? Uh, well, I think it definitely taught me that I can physically shape shift as well, but it doesn't have to be just, I don't know if, I, if I'm answering your question properly, but um, I think, I think that for me is the connection that um, I felt empowered to explore more what I could, what I was physically capable of because I knew I had this incredible canon mm. of voices mm. uh, and the ability to create new ones uh, but yeah, I just never trusted it as a theater artist. You know, I'm, I'm six foot one. I'm kind of weird looking, you know, um, I thought, Oh, uh, the only roles for me are wacky sister and waitress number three, yeah, you know, yeah. it, it, it taught me that I can theater is about imagination. I can be anything and, mm. and use those voices anywhere. It's just crafting the right project. Yeah. Yeah. What are some of your that, favorite favorite characters that you played? Or oh golly, that's tough. Um, well, I think I've definitely really fallen in love with all the the wives in the Six Wives of Henry VIII, just because I've been touring that show for five years now. Um, and so I just I have a deep love of all of them. Yeah. Um, there's. And they're they're all kind of facets of myself, I think. And yeah. I think you know, when you're creating a character, you kind of start you start with what you have here, and then you yeah yeah build. From Can that. you briefly so just, like, just describe that 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 the play? Just the yeah the okay. Synopsis. So um, till death, the six wives of Henry VIII is a uh, it's a solo show where I play all of the six wives of Henry VIII in an ante room in purgatory. Uh, where St. Peter basically tells them that they need to decide amongst themselves who gets to go to royal heaven uh, and live with Henry. Um, and, like, royal heaven's way nicer, you know. They've got catering and, you know, water sports and, like, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's all very silly. Um, and I, I rapidly sort of shapeshift between them as they battle it out. Uh, and then Henry arrives and 
things change. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's largely a comedy, but we ultimately really try to honor all of those stories and, um, you know, make sure that it's understood that he was just not a good person at all. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and that these women were absolutely remarkable and it, it's ultimately a feminist play. Yeah. Which I'm very proud of. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Katarina's fiery and just <laughs> grump, you know, and, um, like Anne Boleyn, the way I play her, she's just so dry. Just yeah. still. Um, I'm trying to do them in order. Uh, and Jane Seymour, so proper and um, <laughs> ooh, prudish. Uh, Anne of Cleves, I do feel a bit bad about our portrayal of Anne of Cleves because, I mean, the whole idea is that she was just so ugly uh, to Henry VIII that, you know, that they couldn't even consummate their marriage, you know. There was, yeah. He was misled by this flattering portrait, right? So... I do. The feminist in me is like, oh, take away my card, you know, because we do her like, she's like, just this stupid German. It's like, it's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> but it's super fun. But it works. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Catherine Howard uh, is Katie, um, which is always fun because she's just so, <laughs> you know, whatever. Oh my God. But again, you know, she she was a very uh, giving person. She did a lot for charity, and you know, we do redu reduce her to this, you know, oversexed tart of a teenager. Yeah. Uh, there's so much of the story we don't get to tell. And then, uh, um, uh, oh my gosh, Catherine, I haven't done the show in a while. I'm losing my mind. Um, Catherine, what's her name? The last one. Catherine, it's another Catherine. She's really still and really all. I've lost my mind. I, I, yeah, I, I can't yeah. remember. I remember. It's funny because when I think of when I think of you performing that play, I saw I saw it in yeah. Vancouver. Yeah, I yeah. see like you know seven people or whatever. I just see all these people yeah, on yeah, stage yeah. in my mind. Like that's, it was. Yeah. So you're like you're a magician. Oh, thanks. <laughs> it's making me nuts. I feel like I've lost my mind. Okay, I'll, we'll leave it. That that's okay. Did you um, did you co-write that one, or was that did did Ryan write that? No, Ryan Ryan wrote it. Ryan I wrote uh, it. I brought the idea to him. Okay. Um, uh, which which actually had been given to me by a couple of other uh, friends of ours from the Canadian Fringe Festival circuit, which is where we kind of workshop our our new shows. Like several people had said it to me. They said you know what would be great? And uh, and I agreed that it would be worth pursuing. And I, I was going to write it myself. Mm. And we, we definitely jammed on the framework of it and what we wanted it to yeah. ultimately. But I, you know, I would have been way easier on myself. I would have written it as a series of monologues or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, but Ryan, bless him, knew I was capable of more and pushed me pushed to, yeah, yeah. to take on the piece of a... 70 minute sweat fest. So let's talk a little bit about your, the creative process. Like you, so you've written, co-wrote it, acted in 30 plus plays. Um, do you like writing? Do you like the creative process, creating the, creating the pieces? Yeah, I, I love writing. Um, I'm not, I'm not a traditional playwright in that I don't sit down at my computer and go act one, you know, or, you know, list of characters. I'm, I'm more of a creation based playwright. Yeah. So I, I usually start from the character and build them and find their mask and their voice. And then yeah. I'll improvise with myself. I'll often record and the characters will tell me what they want to say yeah. <laughs> through me. And then I'm just, you know, I just document and, uh, and dramaturge from there. That's, that's how I tend to work. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'll, I'll retool or, you know, build, you know, glue or stitch things together from there. Um, but I, yeah, I, I do love it. And I, I hadn't written anything new in a while, uh, aside from, you know, co-creating our adaptations uh, for our kids' shows and stuff, which, which is fun, but it's not, 
you know, if not that, this is spilling out of me, ah, yeah, uh, yeah, which yeah. is such an amazing high. Yeah. And uh, I just finally had one of those um, because I took the time to make some space to let mm-hmm. it come. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. worked. <laughs> uh, when you when you so, say yeah. took some space, what does that mean? I uh, well, just just uh, reducing my role in the company oh, and see, uh, deciding right. not to tour the kids show this year. Yeah. And I didn't I didn't tour the Fringe circuit last year. Yeah. I just did Orlando. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So just taking that time and just doing a few other gigs. I had a few little puppet show commissions and bits and pieces of things. Mm. Um, I just had a little more room to um, not only just hang out with my family and with my friends and the people that I so often don't get to see, uh, which was really healing and important. Um, I just needed to leave room. I needed to not be in the middle of a project for the first time in 10 years because it's just, it's been create this show, do this show, get on the road rinse repeat just which is amazing yeah Living a cre- you yeah because yeah. how long have you incredible. that cycle that you're talking about the rinse repeat how i'm thinking about fringe tours and then you and then you're you're touring uh with monster theater as well and yeah god just you you did a lot of touring and still are going to do a lot of touring i'm sure but uh yeah. how many years were you on the fr- were you doing the fringe circuit tour touring um well first i just need to say katherine parr i can't believe i forgot her name <laughs> that Catherine is parr. insane okay <laughs> Catherine parr was the last wife who was oh, right 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 okay yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay sorry Catherine parr i just i can't believe i couldn't remember her last yeah, name the circle is complete I, now. you know yeah. humans who've never met me before are gonna be like who is this flake <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> okay but fringe circuit uh, I've been doing the Vancouver Fringe, which would be my home fringe, on and off since the early 2000s. Yeah. Um, and then the first time we toured was just bits and pieces in 05, 06. And then when I started working with Monster Theater in 07, that's when I started doing um, upward of seven cities, which which would be two weeks each, mm. uh, uh, every every year. So the, the Canadian Fringe Festival circuit, if you do the whole thing, is... May to mid September, so yeah. it's uh, wow. it's quite a haul. I haven't always done all of it. You know, there were years where we did three cities, five cities, yeah, that kind of thing. But um, so and you, often you, with multiple shows. Yeah, yeah, wow. So sometimes doing two different solo shows in the same city, or one two hander and a solo show. Yeah, there was one year where we, yeah we were doing a two hander. I was doing a solo show, and we were doing one of our kids shows all at the same festival. There were times where I'd, you know, take off one costume, run to the next venue, get in the next costume. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who am I now? What? <laughs> yeah, exactly. shoes or fishnets and heels? What? Where am I? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is exciting. It, no, absolutely uh, exciting. So, but, what, is, uh, so yeah. what do you think all that touring, what did it teach you, do you think? What did you uh, learn from it? Golly. I mean, God, it's probably so much, but... Well, it's for me to get my priorities straight and to calm the heck down. Mm. Um, I think when I started touring, I was always like... I always kind of had my shoulders around my ears a little bit, you know, just thinking about the details. Did we send out the press releases? Did we... Okay, um, do we have all the props? Do we have all the... Um, okay, do we know... Okay, we need to do a line run. We need to... What if the reviews are bad? <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I just, yeah. Just, well, yeah, because you're not just acting, you're this, producing, you're writing. There, there's so many things that you're doing. Everything. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, this just this anxiety monster was just eating me from the inside, and I couldn't tame it. And uh, just over time, I've come to learn that, you know, you, you do your best. And what's important, especially at the outside of a tour with a brand new show, Focus on the show. It's about the art. Make a beautiful show. Make your best show. Don't sacrifice your artistic integrity. Mm. Maybe only three people will come to the first show because you were too busy getting ready to put up any posters, but um, make the best show you can. And then once you're ready, then you can expend energy actively, heartily promoting it. Mm. 
and also know when to delegate. You know, there have been times where we've ended up um, hiring producers or people to help flyer for us or um, do our publicity occasionally, mm-hmm. just yeah. depending on how heavy our load was. Yeah. Because, um, yeah. yeah, I've done that. I've ended up compromising the quality of the show because I was just, I just kept staying up all night making sure I made every possible media hit and hung up every possible poster and da, 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 da. it's mm. like, great. Then a whole bunch of people come, including reviewers and you're on stage going, uh, 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 like missing comedy beats. Like that's, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. not what it's about. No. So compromise yeah. calming yeah. down and yeah, making sure to take the time, take the time for you. Mm. Those first few years, I just partied all the time because it's, you know, it's a great scene. You're hanging out with exciting, yeah, interesting, excited people. Like it's <clears throat> it's summer camp for weird grown-ups, and it's all of your favorite people in one place, and it's magical. Uh, but I also learned to take time to you got to take care of your artists too, you know, because mm-hmm. you stay up all night drinking and having the best time ever with your friends, and then the next day you're trying to do your solo show, and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Art first, people. Art yeah, first. priorities. Priorities. Yeah. But you got to have fun, too. And you can also have fun. Yeah. It's a balance. It's yeah, a balance. Absolutely. At the age of almost 40, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> getting a little bit, putting on my responsible pants, just a little bit. Do you feel like a grown up? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. And I can't even handle the fact, like, I can't believe I'm almost 40. Like, what? What? How did that happen? I don't know. I yeah. certainly don't feel it. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, I have to pay bills and answer emails and make contracts and stuff, but I feel like, I call that my, my grown yuppie time, where I have to, I feel like I'm playing grown up when I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> filing my taxes. I'm like, okay, now I'm going to yeah, be a grown up. Okay. Take out the grown up puppet. Or whatever you yeah, do. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put on my grown up glasses. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I remember playing grown up as a kid, and like I would sit at the table and just have papers and, and a, an adding machine, and I would just be all stressed out and just, <laughs> none of this makes any sense. I just, I can't. <laughs> and I'd put them in the shoebox and put them out of the shoebox and click, 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 click. And, <sighs> and <laughs> yeah. that's what I thought being a grown up was. <laughs> uh, that's kind of that's still how There's I feel about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Numbers are real. But... <laughs> so, what, like <laughs> so what's driving you these? Ask. Huh? I'm not allowed to ask you questions, am I? I wanted to say, do you feel like a grown up? <laughs> do I feel like a grown up? Okay. Um, yeah. I don't know what a grown up is supposed to feel like. So, that's do you know what thing. I mean? It's almost like. Do I feel like a, a white male? I guess, but I don't know what that's supposed to feel like. That's all I know. Um, yeah. I don't think that make that maybe not yeah. the greatest comparison, but uh, yeah. Yeah, well, I guess sometimes. Which, but... In the vehicle, the vehicle that I was given, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and here it is at this point. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it's interesting, and maybe because I don't have kids, you don't have that barometer as well, right? When you're relating right. to someone on a regular basis that's much smaller than you and you're making uh, making decisions that have much higher stakes and all that kind of stuff, mm. um, maybe it's easier to have a better sense of your grown-up self. Not, not to say that parents aren't playful, <laughs> you know, yeah. alive, youthful people, but, but I think without that comparison or being like, oh, God, my kid's this tall now, I'm definitely a grown-up, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, w- without that regular reminder or that level of responsibility, maybe that that aids in my lack of groany eppiness. Groany eppiness? That's a good, <laughs> that's a good word. Good term. <laughs> and what's what's driving you these days? What's what's keeping you going, creating, doing it? What is, I don't know, what, yeah. what keeps you you've doing it? Me, yeah, you've caught me at an interesting time because I... I'm sort of at the end of this period where I I really kind of uh, retreated from my active pursuit of the art. Not not that I was you know retiring or giving up. Quite the contrary. I just I knew I was burnt out. Yeah. And I knew 
that there was something else that I was called to do, but I was just stuck in this pattern. Um, so you caught me in the point where I'm just coming back to life. Uh, yeah, I, I just started applying for festivals and I've got this new show that's just mm. gushing out of me. Like I just can't yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah. I just keep writing things on napkins and I'm just kind of riding that high right now. Um, it's, it's called the Baroness B A R R E N N E S S. Uh, <laughs> and it's a solo musical. Wow. Speaking of challenges, I don't know. I just have to do it. I'm, I've never I seen a musical before. I, <laughs> have, have you, I think, so you've started writing it? Yeah. 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 What kind just of, where were things. you at with, with the writing? Are you, are you cl- close to being right finished? Now, are you sort of mid, midway or? Right now it's skeletal bits and pieces and the, the flesh is just slapping on. Um, <laughs> I've, like, I, I haven't written any of the songs completely, but yeah. I've got all these bits and pieces of lyrics and bits and pieces of melody and themes and I'm seeing it visually. Um, like I can see myself on stage doing it. I see the aesthetic of it. Um, but right now I'm, I'm not putting any pressure on myself to, to hammer it down. I'm just collecting all the parts and yeah. then I'm going to, um, yeah. And then I'm going to stitch it together. But right now yeah. a lot of really exciting parts are appearing. Um, yeah. Exciting. Puzzle piece. Yeah. I'm really excited. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and equally terrified, which is why I know it's what I need to do. Yeah. But yeah, I've got a musical director set up. I've got a because um, I don't I don't know anything about music. <laughs> I just I plunk away my little ukulele on that. Yeah. Could you turn that into a song? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, and yeah, and my my lovely wonderful husband is going to drive my target with me, and uh, which is only fair because it's partly about our lives. So uh, I think you should have oh, a okay. voice. So it's sort of. <laughs> autobiographical uh, or a little bit kind of sort of uh, it, yeah uh but i'm also speaking through i'm also going to channel the characters of uh women who have different relationships to motherhood and or infertility and or the choice to not have children um oh, just wow. kind of exploring the whole gamut of that and uh just different relationships to right. um to motherhood or or not motherhood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but in a hilarious, accessible way. <laughs> <laughs> I love like it. I think I it, love it'll it. be highly comedic, but it's it's. I'm going to drop the bottom out a couple of times for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Fantastic. And um, if you could meet anyone from history, or maybe not his, sorry, not history, but if you could meet anyone alive or dead, mm-hmm. who would that be? Well, until very recently, I probably would have said, um, you know, Carol Burnett or uh, Kristen Wiig or um, Janet Wright or some of the uh, incredible women in comedy that I've admired so deeply my entire life, Uh, which, and of course, I would like to meet them (laughs) Uh, and talk to them. Uh, But I, I feel like I wouldn't necessarily be able to ask them anything new or anything that I don't already know, like just, just keep getting out there and, you know, (laughs) (laughs) I just like to give them all a high five and a hug and say thank you. Um, But truly, as far as a quality conversation that I seek is with my paternal grandparents, my, uh, my dad's parents, because I I did know them in life. They passed away when I was in my early twenties. Um, but I was always really scared of them, and I didn't really engage with them. Mm. They were um, very traditional Mennonite folk, um, right. and my my dad was a bit <clears throat> of a black sheep in the family. Uh, my parents divorced when I was young, and so anytime we were there, I mean, they were very very loving people, but they were always just praying over us and reading us sort of um, hellfire and brimstone kids books, just to like, you know. <laughs> give us a little fear of God and, 
because they thought that was what we needed, you know, and I I know it came from a place of love, but I was so afraid of them. Mm. Um, and I, the more I understand about them, um, in particular, my grandfather, like he, he himself was a bit of a rebel in his community. He was a genius. He built crystal radios in this shed that were totally forbidden and almost was almost thrown from his community. He had an incredible love of classical music. He was always reading. He was just this encyclopedia of a human being. And, uh, and I, yeah, and I was just, I was too scared. I was too scared. Mm -hmm. So now I would just want to hang out with them and get to know them. And especially actually kind of after having been in the afterlife, like, so what do you you think? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no kidding. Got to party a little harder, probably. <laughs> I don't know. That's based on my own uh, spirituality of what, what yeah. I think happens. <laughs> but, um, that's funny because that's uh, never even occurred just, to me. Like, to, no, to, no. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. Because they were just, especially my grandmother was just driven by um, serving God. You know, and she did beautiful things. She sewed quilts and clothing for and sent them to Africa like she was always in service she was always in service to her community um but I think largely she was driven by fear and yeah. is there something you would I, ask them specifically I would like to ask them what what their creative dreams are what they what they what would they do mm. if they weren't living the lives that they lived. Yeah. Yeah. Like what's, what's your fantasy life? Yeah. If you have it without saying, Oh no, no, God might be listening. They probably did have all kinds of things that they really wanted to do. Um, and just thinking about all the, all the folks in this world who have lived lives Mm -hmm. of sacrifice or, you know, for their children, for, for whatever reasons, it's like, I can't, I can't ever take what I, do for granted i can't ever take the gifts that i have for granted yeah you know i i deal with depression and anxiety and i sit around and have pity parties sometimes and it's like why Mm. (laughs) come on yeah yeah you have you have everything you have everything live it be it enjoy it um you know and sometimes the chemicals just say no Were, you, was, I, were your parents, do you have any artists in your family, any performing artists or musicians or anything like that? No, I mean, they, they also have artist hearts for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. My, my dad's highly creative. He, he used to write a lot of poetry and um, just, yeah, highly creative, genius human being. Um, he used to do oil paintings and all kinds of stuff. Right. Um, he was a, a child prodigy taxidermist. Actually, we have like wow. pictures of uh, little Danny Gertzen with he would like find birds dead, and he was like a, award winning at um, at putting them back together. Right. Kind of a creepy thing, but it, it was super talented. Maybe that it. ties into and the puppetry. He, yeah, but now he's in construction, <laughs> um, uh, timber frame, like post and beam stuff, and he's just one of the most wildly creative people in that field. Mm. He's he's won a number of awards for his. Um, uh, unique designs and such. Um, and, uh, and he just, he does stuff like he'll build his own lathe or he'll, you know, invent the, a drill box to make it more convenient. Yeah. You know, uh, half the things in his shop just look like they're put together from car parts and tweezers and who knows what, you know, but he just, he has that kind of mind where he can go to an auction and see all these bits and pieces and just yeah turn yeah. them into a machine. Yeah. Uh, which I think is a, an art form to a degree. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And my mom is just like full of energy. She's just, um, she recently founded a ukulele club in Maple Ridge. Uh, and she's, she's always wanted to pursue music, but, um, mm. that, I think that's one of her dreams that she's finally fulfilling as she approaches 70, which is really cool to see. Yeah. Um, and she's just always learning something new. She's always got this new hot thing that she's super into. <laughs> um, uh, and so, therefore, she's incredibly young. Well, you didn't meet her. I don't, I met, you, I I don't know if you ever met Yeah. I don't I, know. She, she, doesn't strike, she doesn't strike me as almost 70. Like, she's just yeah. vivacious and electric. And, yeah. Not, not actively 
pursuing a life of art, but yeah, yeah, she's but definitely, it's, but it's in definitely there. Yeah. full of it. Um, what would you? What advice would you give to young artists coming up, young performers? Is there anything that any gems of wisdom that you? <laughs> yeah. I would think say, uh, diversify your skill set, um, you know, with things that you enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it wasn't until I really had honed puppetry as a craft that I started getting uh, offered things more often as an actor just because, Oh great. We need someone who can also do this. Um, so if you can also sing or play an instrument, like great, you know, really, really work on those things, develop your, your skill set and your range. Yeah. Um, but also mostly make, make your own. Don't wait around for the phone to ring. I think more and more that's kind of what's happening now is people are creating their own web series or, um, or shows or, you know, and, and even if you yourself are not a playwright, um, you know, find, find a, pe- a group of people that you get along with that you know you'll work well with and collaborate but um, create your own is definitely the way to do it. Um, just by making and producing my own theater and inviting artistic directors over and over and over again, you know, that's how I started uh, being invited into shows and that kind of thing. Because mm. um, uh, that's the best audition. That's the best audition is to have someone see you do your best work in something that is built for what you are capable of as a performer. Mm. Um, you know, there's only so much you can accomplish in a two minute general audition. All right, Tara Travis, thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Well, that was a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Yay.